to our advanced lesson uh today we will um <laughs> about some advanced topics now advanced lessons are normally professional lessons it's more so the vocabulary and the phrases you you will learn will be more for you know business kind of focused you would hear a lot about work workplaces meetings schedules so i think and i, I think why um why we call it advanced even the native speakers struggle with these uh kind of uh, phrases because uh if, if they didn't go to school um they have a certain way of speaking and they might not have the etiquette of speaking uh, in a professional setting so uh, that's why that's why these the, these lessons are advanced lessons but i don't know <laughs> um so i'll share my so much. i'm okay. not sure I, I can tell i can talk business topics in russian actually putting in an answer questions but it's good to have like a role play so what we are discussing in a role in this role play is i'm alex and you're nicole okay we are discussing our work challenges you know at work there are a lot of challenges uh, difficult situations and i'm i'm just sharing some of the difficult situations with you um actually nicole is you you you're probably sharing uh so uh, you give me a call and and uh, I'm picking up. It's it's a phone phone call conversation, um, and you're giving me a call and I'm like, Alex Wilson. Oh hi Alex, it's Nicole. Hi Nicole, um, are you calling to confirm our meeting tomorrow? Actually, I'm calling to say that I have to cancel. Oh, that's too bad. Is everything okay? Uh, remember that big project I told you I was working on? Yeah. Well, it just got bigger. My, my boss decided to expand certain parts of it. To make matters worse, we're understaffed right now. Sounds pretty rough, Nicole. Listen, there's no pressure on us to meet this week. Why don't you give me a call when things get a little better? Uh, that might not be for a couple of weeks yet, Alex. That's all right. What I would like to discuss can wait a little, a, a while longer. Thanks, Alex. I appreciate your understanding. I don't know the word understaffed. I will okay. write it down. Yeah, very good. Uh, so, uh, understaffed means that we don't have enough stuff. Mm -hmm. Over staff, under staff. So under we we are supposed to have one hundred people working for us. We only have eighty people working. So we are under staff. And whenever this situation arises where we are under staffed and uh, we don't have enough staff, everyone else, everyone who's working there, have to do long hours. They feel a lot of. They feel uh very stressed. Um. And especially when uh, Nicole, like Nicole is discussing here that she, uh, her boss has decided to expand certain parts of her project and there is not enough people to work on the project and that, and that team. And, and that's, that's causing her that, that stress. And she's calling me to cancel the, the, meet, the meeting. Um, anything else that came out of it? Uh, no, I can understand all of this. You can understand really all of that. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. great. So this is this is, I mean, a, a professional way of uh, of dialogue. I mean, with with your friends, this is very formal English. Um, uh -huh. This is how we would, you know, expand certain parts. Um, you, she could just say that uh, we, I have more more things to do, but she's expand certain parts. Uh, got bigger, pretty rough, uh, and then. Um, wait a while longer i appreciate your understanding all this um so this is i mean if, if even if when you're calling uh for a job interview uh you can use some of these vocabularies uh in a professional setting uh nice. the next wait, wait, yeah wait, wait. Uh, yes you can wait. you can access this on google uh on youtube right <laughs> yeah because i will i will use it it's nice yeah really. yeah that's great. Um, okay, so we are also going to look at some emails. You know, how do we write emails? For example, here, um, uh, this is an email. And 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 the title basically is <clears throat> what we are learning, the theme, the topic of, of this activity is to sum, summarize difficult actions. This person is taking difficult action and he's summarizing what, what action is taking. Uh, 
Uh, I want you to read this, but in in a second, I'll, I'll just show you uh, how we write emails. We we you know there is a there is a box for to from and subject, and in subject you just write you know what the topic of the email is, and you start with Miss Mr. Smith and. Uh, Please read out this email and then we will discuss some of the phrases from this email and how it's laid out. Mm -hmm. I read by myself. Yes, Not yes. Aloud. Mm -hmm. yeah, read aloud, read aloud, please. Aloud? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that we can look at some pronunciation as well. Oh, yeah. okay. Okay, I'm starting. As you know, from our conversations last week, the finance team has fallen behind schedule. We've had problems that none of us anticipated. We are getting everything we can, to, we can to get the project back on track. The entire department is putting in very long hours. Unfortunately, it's going to be difficult to make up the time in the schedule. We all know how important this project is for the company's sales targets next year. Because of this, some members of the team have expressed concern about their job security. Morale, morale, morale is very low. I need your advice and guidance on how to handle, handle this situation. Would you be able to meet with me later today or tomorrow? Mm -hmm. uh, morale is very low. I don't know. Moral? This. Okay. Do you know what's the meaning of this word? Morale. Mm, no, I don't really. I'm not pretty sure. Okay, okay, great. Um, so two things. First, let's discuss uh one pronunciation. Uh, how do you pronounce? Um, let me place a cursor on it. How do you pronounce this word? Schedule or shadow. Yeah. Schedule, schedule or schedule. Or schedule. Yeah, schedule is American uh pronunciation, and schedule is um. Uh, British or Australian, <clears throat> but uh, you, uh, yeah. So, if you you're using the uh, the American one, so schedule, schedule. Yes, yeah, schedule because I watch American movies. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. It's much. <laughs> I mean, if if you're focusing on pronunciation, I, I would kind of stick to American because it's uh so much easier. It's it doesn't vary so much unless you're uh -huh. from Texas or whatever. But in British, uh, there are a lot of different accents in, in inside of England. Um, Cockney accent, Liverpool accent. Liverpool accent is like this book. Like they call it book will be book. Like that kind of accent. So, <laughs> so the pronunciation I, very, yes. I tried to watch one British movie and I didn't understand anything. <laughs> <laughs> it might be, it might be like a, I don't know. Yeah, like a Cockney accent. Especially the uh -huh. Scottish accent is very hard to understand. Scottish. It's a different language. It's, it's a different language, yeah. yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's good to stick with the uh, American uh, pronunciation, which is good. Uh, and the other, this word is, uh, let's, um, okay, morale is something that, uh, that we that we have when we work somewhere uh for example if if we are not getting appreciated by our boss the morale mm -hmm. will go down right this is basically our feeling morale is like a feeling our feelings are low at the moment um but there is another an another word and and the pronunciation is morale morale morale, morale. morale. Yeah. uh there is another word um moral okay Moral, moral mean moral m o r uh, m o r a l so moral of the story you might have heard of this 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 word before moral of the story the lesson of the story yeah oh. so the moral of the story is i think you uh, a few days ago you said the moral of the story is um yes yeah, so this is why i confused this Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, so that's why I'm mentioning. Don't confuse the two words. These are two mm -hmm. different words. Morale and moral. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so moral of the story is the lesson of the story, what you can learn from it. Uh, morale is um, our feelings. Um, if, mm -hmm. if, for example, if we are under a lot of pressure, people, the, the morale of the team is low. They're not, they're not motivated 
uh, yeah, they are not motivated. Yeah. Morale being low means we are not motivated. Morale is high means they are very motivated. So some of the phrases that we can uh, look at uh, in this email is back on track. Yeah, back on track. Back on mm -hmm. track. Yeah, that's that's a good one. The back. What, what does back on track means? Wait, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can only guess. Forget everything. Yeah, yeah. Try to guess. Yeah. The project back on time, maybe. On time, exactly. Mm -hmm. So back on track. Everything, uh, and then reading the con context helps. Um, uh, long hours. Uh, long hours. The entire department is putting in very long hours mm, to make it longer. I don't know. Entire department is putting it. So long in. hours. Putting long hours means working uh, long hours or staying back. For example, I start at nine and I finish at five, but today I'm working from nine to nine. So I'm working long hours. I'm working more than usual hours. Uh, yeah. Overworking, something like Overworking. This. yeah, yeah. Working more than you normally do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Working. I'm working long hours. I'm actually, I'm, re I'm, I'm really working long hours these days, but it's okay. It's a tr transition phase. It's okay. Uh, um, I, I I like what I'm doing, so yeah, I don't. It doesn't impact me. Um, the other thing, uh, okay, what what does it mean? A time in the schedule. Make up the time. Doc, make up the time in the schedule. Unfortunately, it's going to be difficult to make up the time mm, to be on time again. <laughs> be on time. Yeah, to be on time. Yeah. Yeah. So it will be difficult for us to uh, finish our project on time. To make up the time in the schedule. So the schedule we were supposed to finish on Friday, but I'm afraid we are we are gonna struggle with that. That's what it means. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Some members of the team have expressed concern of the job security morale is low. We have discussed that. Uh, I need your advice and guidance on how to handle the situation. Okay, I think you you're comfortable with the rest of it, right? Anything else stands out? Well, no, how Barnes Brothers company sales targets. Targets, uh, um, do I pronounce it well? Targets. Targets, yeah, yeah, correct. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Because of this, some members of the team have expressed concern about their job skills. Okay, how do you explain the word concern? I just make sure in it. Right, right. So concern is some worry. So we are worried about something. So for example, I have a worry that I might lose my job. That's my concern. You know, yeah, some people, yeah. Uh, for example, some people might ask you, um, uh, I'm, I'm sorry to hear that you are overworking these days. And you can say thanks for your concern or thanks uh -huh. for care for your care. Um, or sometimes you, if you want to be rude, you can say that's none of your concern. <laughs> if you don't no, like, it's it. none of your business. Yeah. Thanks for your concern. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Morale is very low. Yeah. Low or law? Low. 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 Low, low. law would be the L A W law. Law, lawyer. Uh, lawyer. And yeah. this is law. Law. This is law. Law. Just law. L O. Law. Law. I need your advice and guidance on how to handle this situation. Would you be able to meet with me later today? Okay, yes. let's try. Yeah. Everything is clear. Yeah, let's try the. How do you pronounce this word? Situation. Situ. Situation. Situation. Yeah, situation. Situation. Yeah, beautiful. That's great. So, situation. Mm -hmm. I I really wish someone to correct my pronunciation. The pronunciation, yeah, yeah, yeah. We can work on the pronunciation. <laughs> Actually, in 
actually mm -hmm. after finishing uh, this level because obviously this is level seven uh, it's this is this is c1 level actually this is very this is very advanced level so after finishing that we will move on to c2 level uh, uh -huh. actually c c1 slash c2 and then you've got nine and ten level which is very advanced so i think you already will reach c c2 but then we need to i i i, I call it fine tuning some loose ends uh and those are pronunciation pronunciation really people shouldn't worry about pronunciation till the end because um as long as you have good vocabulary and grammar people will understand you pronunciation might not be and you don't have major problems with pronunciation uh but those i have a whole course for pronunciation as well so we can learn pronunciation um while we go but during during these lessons we will also learn pronunciation of some words i'll I'll fix, I'll fix but but the main goal is not to focus on pronunciation at the moment uh because we will then spend too much time on another thing okay there is another email i want you to read there's also good phrases for uh this but the context of this email is turning things around what do you mean uh, what do you think turning things around means i don't know Okay, so <laughs> if, for example, we, we are having a bad or we're having a challenging time, we are not uh -huh. able to complete our project by Friday. And we we, we thought about this a lot. We, we were sitting at night, uh, we couldn't sleep, and we came up with a great idea. Uh, if we uh, hired another external team to do our project or help with our project, we can think we can turn things around we can still complete our project on time so turn things around means to uh to be able to achieve our goals um by turning it by turning the situation by turning a hard situation and uh making it easy that's what turning things around means uh, and you will learn more when you read the email you will learn more how they turn around the situation. Okay, so should I read? Yes, please. Uh, hi, George. Thanks for your advice. Mm -hmm. I took your advice about addressing the team's lack of morale after the senior finance manager left three weeks ago. I brought everyone in, in the department together and I explained the situ situation. I challenged the group to rise to the occasion and finish the project without him. I explained the strategy I had in mind, but also uh, asked for their input. They had a number of good ideas. The head of our division had promised that the company would give us all bonuses if we met our deadlines. They reacted very posit pos positively when I told them that. I think the situation is under control now and the project is nearly back on schedule. So it's like a J, you know, uh, like let's say Jessica. So schedule. Jessica. Yeah. Let's say J, J, yeah, J. Schedule. By the way, I received a nice compliment from my boss on my leadership skills. Thanks for your for all your help, George. Your advice really helped me turn things around. Well, I didn't understand anything. Okay, but, okay. Well, one thing I want to tell you: do not focus on pronunciation. Sorry, I um, pointed some of the pronunciation errors, but that's not your focus. Um, Please read one more time and read it yeah. for uh, for comprehension, for understanding the message. Yeah. Yeah, I'll give you a minute. Read it one time and then we will discuss some of the words that you may not understand.
Well, to rise to the occasion, I don't understand this. Rise to the occasion. And, okay. That's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah, and challenge the group also. Challenge the group. Okay. Not sure about it. I mean, uh, challenge the group is like, for example, um, I have a team and uh, uh, my boss or my, my director of marketing uh, gave us a project to complete, which is unrealistic project. Um, and my team thinks it's an unrealistic project. Um, this director is telling me, oh, I need that completed by uh, one in one week's time. But it, my team is telling me, oh, that can't be done in one week's time. That can be done in two weeks time. It's a, it's a very unachievable project. So, but what I'm doing is I'm challenging them. I challenged the group to rise to the occasion. Rise to the occasion means, for example, it's a difficult situation and you have to rise. You have to rise to the occasion to be able to uh, be successful. You have to uh, get motivated, get pumped and r rise to the occasion to be able to achieve uh, this challenging. So I, I'm challenging you to rise to the occasion. And th the occasion is basically this mo uh, this project, right? This challenging project. And they're they're rising to the occasion. Rising meaning they're able, they're 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 trying to achieve that. They they're trying to achieve that. And this is a way of motivating someone. When you want to motivate your team, uh, you can use this these kind of vocabulary that uh, you know what. My team, listen to me. This is a challenging situation, but I want you to rise to the occasion or I want you to tighten your belts. It's another one. I don't want to bring that for now, but um, I want you to be to work a little hard. Uh, and this is a this is a good phrase that you can use to motivate people. I want you to rise to the occasion. I know it's a difficult and challenging uh, occasion, but we have to work a little hard. That's what it means. Mm -hmm. I hope it's clear. Your, <laughs> I understand this. Starting your wills to work on, on to the project. Mm -hmm. And finish the project without him. Mm -hmm. Explain the strategy. But in mind, it also asked. Oh, uh, well, ask for their input, ask for their participation in this. Ask for their input. Okay, I've got 10 minutes. Um, yeah, so asking for their input, for example, uh, the, director, uh, the director of marketing asked me, what do you think, uh, how much time would you need uh, to complete this project? And I asked my team for their input. I input could be ideas, suggestions, recommendations, so, for example, I'm, I, I would ask you, uh, I'm asking for your feedback, right? I'm, I'm designing this course and I'm asking, uh, Anna, can you help me? Um, I, I need your input on this um, because I'm designing a course. You are, uh, you are an experienced teacher and I want your feedback uh, and your experience. Um, so can, you ha can I have your input on this project? That's, that's what it means. We had yeah. another good news. We had our own division. 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 Yeah. Good pronunciation. Division is like um, I mean, we have finance division. It could it you can call it departments as well. But uh ah, finance division, yeah. Finance division, marketing division, sales division, all of these are divisions, or even you can call them departments. Or functions, even sometimes you call them functions. Functions, functions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Divisions equals department equals functions. Deadlines. Yeah. What does deadlines mean? Ah, oh, deadline is the time until uh, those you should finish. You should finish something. Yep. Yeah. Good. Good. Is a is a word. Yeah. The division had promised. The company would give us a bonus so if met our deadlines. To meet deadline deadlines to meet meet, meet our deadlines meet yeah, to meet the, our deadline. deadlines. Yeah. Or to be on deadlines. To, to meet our deadlines. Hmm. To 
Und Modellers. Ja. They reacted very positively when I told them that no, it's easy. I think the situation is under control and the project is nearly back. On schedule. <laughs> schedule. Yeah, By the it's, way, not D, it's not D, it's J. Yeah, schedule. it's confusing because it's it's D, but it's it's J. English is a funny language. <laughs> it's, it's pronounced as J. Um well, yeah, schedule. schedule. Yeah, it's, it's I you know phony of uh, uh, phonetic uh, letters the those letters which look like weird kind of symbols those are called phon phonetic phonetic letters yeah phonemes letters yeah but no, pronunciation we, there is a chart IPS chart or something uh it, it has I, I might share I don't use that for teaching uh for especially for advanced um advanced ah oh, you mean Phonetic, yes. Phonetics, yeah, phonetics. Mm -hmm. yeah, yes, I, I used to learn that at school. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's, that's, that is, <laughs> you will look at the pronunciation in, in that chart, it will show you a J sign. Yes, now I understand what you're talking about. Yes. Schedule. Schedule, yeah, yeah. By the way, I received a nice compliment from my boss on my leadership skills. Thanks for all your help, George. Your advice really helped me turn things around. Mm -hmm. So the decision of this problem was to challenge the group. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And he... <laughs> and... Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and to make them think <laughs> about... And to make the rise them to the about... occasion. Yeah. Rise to the occasion. Rise to the occasion, yeah. And uh, what, what does it mean under control? No, everything is okay. Yeah. I handle it. It's mm -hmm. easy. I know this. Mm -hmm. That's good. <laughs> so, you know, it's a, it's an easy decision <laughs> of solving this problem. Well, I challenged the group and they, <laughs> 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 and they will do everything. And I asked for their input. It, it's not realistic, right? So I asked for the input. <laughs> they gave me good ideas. Oh, and I, Got yeah. compliments from my boss and yeah. without and reality, any special to you. In reality, none of that happens. <laughs> yeah, your advice really helped me <laughs> turn things around. Thank you. You know what? What that's it's all. Enough. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna look at some of the phrases for projects and schedules. Uh, number one is ahead of schedule, as you can see. But I want you. I'll give you some uh, mental channel challenge. Uh, there is an example here. I will finish my project ahead of uh, schedule. I want you to make a sentence from this phrase, okay. using this phrase. <laughs> cool. Uh, <laughs> so I should make a phrase with ahead of schedule. You should make a sentence with a, with, with a phrase, yeah. Uh, uh, well, to, to finish... My project ahead of schedule. I need a help, the help of my team. I need to. Oh wait, wait, wait. Yeah, write it down. Maybe yeah. challenge the group. I need to challenge the group. I need to challenge the group. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Exactly what else? <laughs> See, this is working. You're applying the knowledge straight away. <laughs> yeah, I, I need to learn them by heart. Okay, I will have one week to do. One week to do this. Beautiful. Okay, that's fantastic. That's brilliant. Uh, on schedule. That's um... on schedule. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We are on schedule to meet our targets. Uh... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, we need to rise the occasion. <laughs> <laughs> we need to... <laughs> we need to rise to the occasion. Rise to okay. the occasion. Yeah, we need to rise, rise to, to the. the... To the occasion? Finish our project on schedule. To finish our project on schedule. Wonderful. That's great. And you're using that previous learned knowledge and applying it in these. That's that's amazing. Okay, uh, behind, behind schedule. Behind schedule. Mm -hmm. The train is running behind schedule. When one, one of the one 
one member of our group is ill, so we can't work without him and we can we will finish this project behind schedule. <laughs> one of our team, sorry, I didn't get that first one. The first part. The first part? Yeah. One uh, mm, one member of our group is ill. Is sick, yeah. Sick? Yeah. Uh, what is the difference be between ill okay, and I sick? would yeah, so <laughs> So ill would be for about, it could be about his character. Like I wouldn't use, it's a little risky to to call someone he's an ill person. It could, it could mean, it could mean that he is like he's mentally sick or, you know, he's, right. he's not right. a, he's not a good person or yeah. So really? I, I mean, in, in this situation, in this sentence, in this context, uh. you say he's sick because he's temporary. Ill is yeah a person that is that probably has uh, really? a long term <laughs> so, when, when we learn this school uh in our english grammar we uh explain this like ill is uh, laying in bed with some high temperature or having flu and is mm -hmm. sick it's like blah. yeah yeah, it's, it's if you look at the literal meanings, you probably they, they might be right about this, but uh, in in this context, because you have to think about the context, uh, it, normally people won't say ill uh, for uh -huh. a temporary for a temporary sickness. They wouldn't call it ill. Uh, they they uh, my 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 colleague is ill today. <laughs> yeah, it's it, I mean I don't hear that from native speakers so. I, I think if you say that about someone, it, it could mean that this person is ill. But if you say today, then then okay, they will understand. If the person yeah. is ill today, that would mean, okay, yeah, he, this person is uh, sick today. But if you said this person is ill um, and oh, yeah. I can't complete my assignment, that, that, mm -hmm. could, that could mean that this person is probably... Um, it it might he he might have temp, a permanent disability or permanently sick or it could mean that he's just a it's a bad person. Mm -hmm. You know ill behavior. Have you heard about ill behavior? This is one one phrase. He has very ill behavior. He is behaving in an ill way. That that means it's a bad way. Like ill could mean bad, a bad person. What sorry? Okay, let's say uh, and, uh, not one, sorry. Member, one, one member of our team is sick. Uh, yeah. That's why I, we can't finish our project. Oh, we, can, we will finish our project, project behind schedule. Behind schedule. Yeah, beautiful. We will run late. Yeah. Great. And how, uh, wait, wait, wait. How should we pronounce behind or behind? I say behind because in Australia, behind. yeah, but it could be, look, let me, let me check. It could be American could be behind because uh, British and um, all, all the English is behind. I have a mixed accent, so I normally use uh, behind, but I started using behind. I, I think I, I used to use behind, but I, let me, let me just quickly check this. Thanks. Thanks for asking. Uh, uh, behind. I, I say behind, but uh, um, it I think behind is also fine. I I don't so okay. Behind, behind. Uh, this is oh this is American, is it? Yeah, American also say behind. 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 Yeah, okay, behind. So American is also behind, and then British is of course behind. Yeah. So so behind. Bah, behind. 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 Yeah, correct. Uh, so let's try. This. Oh, you already done this, right? Okay, great. Let's uh, let's do these uh, four four of these under control. Let's try to make a sentence. <laughs> My brain is blowing. <laughs> <laughs> is it too much information for uh, one, one lesson? No, no, just yeah. I'm not used to study. <laughs> <laughs> you used to teaching. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Places for projects and schedules. Under control. A difficult situation that is being managed successfully. Well, uh, 
Don't mm-hmm. worry, darling. Everything is under control. <laughs> oh, right. Beautiful. Yeah. That's, that's <laughs> it's from, it's from, I, I think now you understand the pain of your students, <laughs> how hard it is to learn something. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's from, it's from one animated um, movie. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was just talking. Yeah. I'm a monster. It's called I'm a monster. A monster. For example, I took two hours to bring the fire under control. Yes, I understand this. Yeah. Uh, well, control. Okay, our our team works hard, so we get everything. We take on everything under control. Our team works hard, so no, 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 no out of control. Sorry, out of control. Oh, out of control. Yeah. Out of control. A difficult situation has become unmanageable. Well, it's easy. For example, the workload has gotten out of control. <clears throat> so um, I didn't have time to water the fire, so the situation went out of control. Mm-hmm. Okay, nice, nice. I couldn't extinguish the fire extinguish extinguish so you know fire extinguisher no we all have that fire extinguisher that red thing that everyone has uh that cylinder small that has water inside uh huh extinguish so, extinguish yeah mm-hmm. extinguish the fire that got up. So actually, there was a building. Uh, I'll share this with you. Uh, there was a building. I used to work there before. Uh, it it's in the city, and uh, not where I work now. But I used to work there, just a few blocks from from that building, and it's it got set on fire, and it was set on fire by teenager, uh, boys, mm-hmm. and the whole building, it's seven level building, got fired. It was a big news. Um, I'll share that news with you and. Like I used to literally work like uh, two blocks from that building. Uh, very scary kind of situation. Yeah. Oh, scary. scary. Fire is really scary. Did mm. anyone die? No one got hurt. Uh, nice. Fortunately, that's yeah, that's great. But yeah, two two of the teenagers came forward to to the police and and said that they said the they had they had more friends. Who, who were involved in this. Uh, so police is trying to find um, the rest of the three or four other teenagers who were involved in this, but yeah. Crazy, crazy event, yeah. Okay, on track. That's on track, true. going according to plan. We are mm-hmm. right on track to create 100 jobs, 100 jobs this year. We have, well, let me think. (laughs) (laughs) I will do this. (laughs) Yeah, you could just change my, you can just change subjects in in, in the sentence, right? So we we are right. Yeah, okay. You're trying, trying to, to a complicated one. Okay, okay. Cool. <laughs> it's not complicated one. I'm just tired. I'm tired. Just unique. <laughs> uh-huh. Mm. Oh, we have all our computers. Mm. Wait. Mm-hmm. Maybe write it down and, and see if it makes sense. We have, no, I'm trying to make a new sentence. We have all our computers uh, working well, so we are right on track to to deliver our lessons or to <laughs> to make this mm. to make this to to finish our project. Again. Finish your project. Yeah, yeah, beautiful. Yeah, great, perfect. What about off track? 
I've checked. Oh, well, <laughs> we, our computers are broken. Not working, so. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> Good. The first system to, to be off track, to have gone off track. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so we are off track. Mm, yeah, so, you, you are off track. That's okay. completely fine. Yeah, that's completely fine as well. Like, yeah, and, and you know what happens is that, like like I said, you know, when I was talking and we were discussing some um, nuances uh, working in, in office and, and writing emails, I was I, I said this phrase, yeah, I, I'm going off track. Uh, I'm going off track means I'm, I'm going off topic. I, I'm supposed to, I mean, I'm, this class is about teaching English, but I'm talking about uh, professional, pol uh, like office politics or whatever. Uh, so I'm going off track or I'm going, uh, it, it, it it's, uh, we use that a lot in presentations. Mm -hmm. So, uh, for example, we are supposed to present, uh, to sales, uh, like sales projections and, and we are talking about marketing plans. So people could just, uh, just ask us like, uh, oh, sorry, you're going off track or, or you could just say, uh, if you wanted to mention something that is not part of the agenda of that meeting, you could say, oh, I'm going off track, but I want to uh, really uh, take you through this very important um, uh, important fact about marketing, but I'm going off track uh, to do that. Yes, I, I understand when you, I understood it when you were talking. So I understood yep. the meaning of connected. Mm. And you can you can start using uh, this. Uh... We're getting off track. <laughs> okay, let's stay on track. <laughs> let's let's stay keep... on track. Okay. Let's stay on let's track. Stay on track. Let's stay on track and discuss models of probability. This is grammar, so we're learning grammar. Um, so uh, these are models. Uh, should, ought to, must, ought to, we, uh, people don't use it very often now. Actually, I don't hear any, I don't, I didn't hear anyone using this uh, uh, anymore, but it, it is one way you could, you could use to define, to talk about certain situations. So if something is that, uh, something is certain, we could say he should be arriving any minute. He said he will arrive or he, he said he will arrive, sorry, I missed Will. He will arrive at 1 p.m. and now it's 12.55. So we know that it's certain that he will arrive. Uh, so we could say should. The customer mm -hmm. ought to like the product, we follow their requirements. Mr. Peter must be, must is very, very certain, like for sure. You're certain about this. Should, not that certain, ought to is like in the middle and the must is very, very certain. Uh, so Mr. Peter must be happy with our work if she decided to promote. You already know that because she promoted you. Oh, not she. He must be very sorry. I made that mistake. Uh, it should be he, Mr. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, let's make three sentences using should, ought to, and must. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Well. I know a lot of sentences with should and must. Mm -hmm. I... Let's try to use it for certain. You must be kidding me. You must be kidding me. Mm -hmm. uh, she, she, well, you must not shout. You must not shout uh, in the classroom. Shout? Uh, you must cut the rope. <laughs> you know? Right. In the movies, when you are, uh -huh, uh, uh -huh. someone is taking it. Uh -huh, you uh -huh. must cut it. You must cut the rope. You must cut the rope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mr. Happy. Yes. Uh, he must be very sad that he lost his wife. Maybe. Oh yeah. 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 He That's should great. be running a minute. Well. Hmm. You should do your homework uh, on time, not on time, back on track. Uh, to get back on track. 
Uh, no, but we are talking about certain situation. Yeah, you should. You should is also used for advice. Yeah. So in this case, you're using it for giving an advice. But if you're certain of a, about an event, for example, you said he lost oh. his wife. He must be happy. Also yes. not happy. Or oh, some people might be happy to lose their wife, but <laughs> just. <laughs> See, he's, M- might he be. said. Might yeah, yeah. He said. <laughs> Sorry. But you could say he he should be. You, you could also use he should be. He ought to be. <laughs> he should be. He should be sad. <laughs> yeah. He lost his wife. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. Um, okay. You want to? Our flight mm-hmm. uh, should be uh, depart in 10 minutes. Yes. That's a good one. Yeah. Should depart, uh, depart in 10 minutes because, yeah, you can see the plane outside and uh, you know that it's uh, oh, it's boarding passengers now. So, yeah, great. Yeah, well, my parents should be uh, yeah leaving their home now. I don't know. What to that. Should, they yeah, should uh, be doing something. Because they called me, yeah, I mean, at a go and told me that they're doing something. Yeah, great, great, perfect. You got this. Um, okay. Let's do a role play. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, actually, you you start. This is a phone call. So you read the first message, uh, and then I will read the second sentence. You have reached Emma Smith, director of marketing for town enterprises please leave a message i'll return your call thank you hi miss smith <laughs> it's mike edward we have come up with several solutions to issues uh, to the issues you raised during last friday's meeting we would like to have an opportunity to dis- to share our ideas with you please give me a call at 454-889-21 thank you mm-hmm. so Obviously, when when you call someone, this for example is going, um, it's going in a voicemail. It's it's an auto voicemail, uh, and the voicemail reads, uh, "You have re- reached Emma uh, Smith, uh, director of marketing for Town Enterprises. Please leave a message. I'll return your call. Thank you." That's a voice message. Normally, people record voice messages. I don't record, uh, voice messages. So people complain, "Oh, when I call you." Uh, it says, please leave a message for zero, 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 some kind of word, uh, numbers. <laughs> so, I'm like, yeah, it's okay. I'm too lazy for recording messages. Uh, but it was very, you know, you used to have, people used to have answering machines uh, where they there was a like a voice message, voicemail. Mm-hmm. Voicemail was very common before. Um, we never had something like this. You, you never had like that. I only saw this in American movies. Watched. Yeah, yeah, it was so common, and and you know people still have it, especially the recruiters, um, you know the uh, the headhunters, if you may mm-hmm. know. Yeah, they mm-hmm. normally so when they uh, when you try to call late, like, normally they call me, but then uh, when I'm busy, I can't pick up for some reason. Their 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 phone call. I try to get reach back to them or try to get get back to them. Uh, they would always have a voice message, voicemail. They it will go to voicemail because they might be busy, they might be meeting, and they will be like, "Hey, uh, this is Emma Smith. Please leave a message. Uh, I will get back to you as soon as possible." Um, it's very common still, but in professional settings, because people could just leave a WhatsApp or something, right? I mean, a voicemail through WhatsApp. Uh, but yeah. Uh, Mr. Smith, uh, Miss Smith, it's uh, it's Mike Edward. We have come up with several. We have come up. So this is one uh, phrase as well. We have come up with several solutions. He, did you understand that? Uh, I mean, you able to? Yes, we, hmm? we come up. Yeah, coming coming up with ideas, coming up with solutions to the issues you raised during the last Friday. We we would like. This is all a professional vocabulary. We would like to uh, have an opportunity to share ideas uh, with you, please give me a call back on that number. Um, okay, uh, now we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about stress. Stress, okay. Please, 
Yeah, please read it's it. It's all about us. Huh? What's that? Sorry. <laughs> it's all about us. <laughs> it's all about stress. us. <laughs> <laughs> Understanding stress. Stress is an abnormal condition that disturbs. Abnormal yeah. is an abnormal condition that disrupts, disrupts, disrupts mm -hmm. the normal functions of the body or mind. No two people are affected in exactly the same way or to the same degree, but most people living in uh, industrialized societies suffer from its effects at uh, one or more times during their lives. Symptoms include mild, 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 yeah. mild headaches, insomnia, restlessness, and digestive, digestive. problems. Problems. Mm -hmm. uh, it's difficult for me because uh, no, it's not difficult to understand. Difficult to read. It's Restless. just the pronunciation. Okay, yeah. Pro don't focus on the pronunciation much. Um, mm -hmm. I, I'll, I'll tell you where the pronunciation is, but uh, I think the most important thing is to understand the message. So stress is an abnormal condition. It's not normal. Like stress, mm -hmm. we shouldn't be in stress. I mean, I've been saying this for many years. We shouldn't have stressful lives. It actually reduces our days in, in that we live. It, it, it reduces uh, years of our life, actually. You know, I, I saw one of my uncles, he, he used to be very stressed and he died of heart heart attack when he was 45 years, young guy. Oh, and uh, and I mean, the stress just reduces the, the, the days that you live. So people are stressed about making money, millions, whatever their target is. And they the, the worst kind of death that you can have is just dying without achieving your goal or in having so much stress in your life and the day you achieved your million dollars that was your target and you died no mm -hmm. that's very sad <laughs> anyway yeah, and, and uh, Sorry for my rant. that's uh, stress uh, causes cancer it causes cancer it causes a lot of different diseases and uh you know uh a lot of diseases uh autoimmune diseases all of these diseases that are popping up especially in u.s and uh, you know stressful countries they have every kid in australia has some kind of not every like majority of the oh, okay. uh -huh. they have allergies they have some kind of problems yeah. and and this is this is yes. just parents you know when when they're they're not even born they're pregnant and the parents are just stressed about something it could um affect the child uh in the pregnancy mm -hmm. so i think it's stress so uh, it's an abnormal condition that disrupts so you may want to know what's disrupts. the meaning of disrupts right disrupts. yes so disrupts yes. means it um stops us from doing something disrupts means it's it it stops the normal functions of the body it doesn't allow uh the normal functions of the body or the mind it disrupts it causes problems uh um, no two people are affected in exactly the same way or to the same degree, but most people living in industrialized societies, industrialized societies are these capitalist countries, mm -hmm. industrialized, yeah, industrialized. suffer from its uh, effects uh, at one or more times during their lives. Symptoms include mild 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 yes mild. headache what is this? mild is um soft for example M mild uh for example you could have a really hard headache you can have very strong headache let's compare it let's contrast with strong yeah migraine. like migraine migraine will be strong but mild mm -hmm. will be not as strong like light headache mm -hmm. mild is the mm -hmm. lighter version yeah uh, mm -hmm. headaches insomnia restlessness and digestive problems digestive is like it's the stomach very stomach yeah you can have constipation or diarrhea i don't know i i think constipation i normally get constipation when i get when i get i don't know the word constipation i don't know okay okay so constipation is when you can't go to the toilet for two days 
<laughs> just give you <laughs> a very graphic Const example. Con constipation. Sorry? Constipation. Constipation. So constipation. let me. Yeah, I'll just um. I'll just write it down here. Yeah. I'll write it. Constipation. Yeah, I did it right. Digestive stomach. Right, constipation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, constipation is a is a major factor, and some people, you know, it can go even worse. Like you said, cancer. It, you, they can have uh, uh, stomach cancer because of because of yeah. stress. So that's terrible. Uh, causes of mm -hmm. work related stress. So, what are causes of work related stress? Um, mm -hmm. please read this. Trying to do too much in too little time. Mm -hmm. Taking chances that may put you at risk. Trying to get along with colleagues and supervisors. Mm -hmm. And what about uh, your leader shouting at you all the time? Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna see that. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So this is more more for the people who and and it's a good example here. Trying to get along with colleagues and supervisors. If your colleagues and supervisor don't care about you, uh, and you're trying to care about them or getting along with them, you you understand what getting along means, right? Getting along. Well, okay. Trans tr translate, not translate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what it means Explain. is that uh, trying to be friendly with them, uh, trying to make friends. Like for example, yeah, yes. I have a very uh, like rude colleague, and I'm trying to be friends with him. I'm trying to be friendly towards him. I'm trying to get along with him, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's, yes, that's what it means, and and it can be very stressful <laughs> when when you're trying to get along with people who don't care or who are rude. Um, that's uh, mm. that's very stressful. Taking chances that may put you at risk. Uh, you may lose your home. For example, people buy very expensive cars and homes uh, like they do in Australia. Uh, they buy very expensive uh, homes because they want to live near the beach, near the city. And somehow they find that, oh, to be able to pay for my house, I need to work. 30 years of my life and I can't I can't afford to lose my job so it that can that can be very stressful trying to do too much in too little time that, that's what I'm doing but it's okay I'm trying to <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to trying to manage my time I mean I'm trying to manage my stress sorry not time I can't manage time I have too little but it's just... we're all experts in this yeah, what, sorry. We are all experts in this. Yeah, yeah, to do too, too yeah. Time. Exactly. Yeah, you know, you know more than me. Yeah, yeah. of course. Yeah, we all know. <laughs> Every Russian knows <laughs> how how not to sleep during the day at all. <laughs> at night as well. Yeah, sure. Oh wow. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 every 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 mother knows <laughs> every mother knows yeah yeah yeah, yeah true <laughs> yeah okay uh so we're going to talk about uh pressure how we react to pressure now two people we've got two uh personalities on the left it's john on the right is carl and these mm -hmm. are two different personalities but they handle the pressure in different ways let's let's read it that's well, right uh, John. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. John has the uh, wait, ideal or ideal. 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 ideal? ideal. John has the ideal personality to handle pressure. He's calm and almost never gets upset. He's very organized and regularly spends time prioritizing tasks. He paces himself and his work so that he doesn't have to race to meet a deadline because he has confidence in his stuff. He delegates as much as he can so that his workload remains manageable. In short, John has poise, perspective, and peace of mind. Poise, I don't know. 
And so, for the most part, he lives a stress-free existence. I don't know, voice and yeah. Let's read. Let's read Carl as well. Uh, and let's read Carl. Oh, uh, what? Ah, oh, Carl. Okay, Carl. On the other hand, it's not built to handle pressure. He's tense and very excitable by nature. When his work becomes difficult, Carl becomes anxious and impatient with, with his colleagues. He trusts no one and tries to do everything himself. In most cases, he overpromises and underdelivers. He tries to be all things to all people at all times, which is a sure formula for failure. Right. So I think we have three minutes. Okay, cool. Uh, so let's discuss these two personalities, right? Uh, John, he is very, uh, he's very calm, collected. Um, he knows how to handle stress. Carl, very stressful because of his nature, right? So John has ideal personality to handle pressure. He is calm and almost never gets upset. He's very organized and regularly spends time prioritizing tasks. I don't know if it's realistic. I don't know, but okay. He's 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 a cool guy. I'm really impressed by John. He paces himself <laughs> in his life so that he doesn't have to race to meet a deadline. He paces means he he's organized. He organizes his time. He knows when he's doing what. Um, because he has confidence in his stuff, so he has a team that he manages. He delegates. You know what the what delegate means. Yeah, to give your work to, to someone. Give work else. to yeah, exactly. As as much as he can, so that his workload remains manageable. In short, John has poise, perspective, uh, and peace of mind. Uh, and so for most part, he lives a stress free existence. Now, poise, uh, means he's he's very un he can he has control over his emotions. He's very balanced. Um, in in his approach, poise very calm you could also say calm uh, that could be a synonym for this calm balanced under control um on the other hand carl he is not built to handle pressure he is tense very excitable by nature when his work becomes difficult carl becomes anxious and impatient <laughs> with his colleagues i feel that sometimes i'm probably mm -hmm. like carl i don't know I I might be balanced, but um, yeah, we all are Carl. Yeah, I'm probably more Carl than John. Uh, he trusts no one and tries to do everything. No, I I, I trust people, but it's hard to trust people as well because you can't. <laughs> you trust people, and then you know you have to do your work again by yourself. That's that's no fun. In most cases, he overpromises and underdelivers. Now, that's something I, I don't do. If I promise something, I, I deliver. Uh, so that's uh, that's a bad quality. I think you shouldn't overpromise something. He tries to be all things to himself. I've got one minute, uh, but we'll come back. I'll try to finish this. Uh, he tries to be all things to all people at all times, which is a sure formula for failure. That's the pronunciation. Failure. Um, failure. Failure. Failure, failure. Failure. Yeah, failure. Uh, Carl gives, uh, lives a stressful existence, which unfortunately is largely of his own making. Uh, his own making because he, he's, his personality is like that. His, it's his own fault. Own making means his own fault. It's his own making. Let this session finish and then we will come back and discuss. Wow, I, I you know, this session was supposed to finish in like 30, 30 minutes, but this because it's an advanced session. Yeah, we have conversations. I you you might watch and I shared my uh, YouTube video. High pressure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, when I'm under high stress, I, I cry <laughs> somewhere <laughs> somewhere in the restroom. Yes, I go and cry. You know, um, yeah, yeah. The restroom is the place where women cry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, but next day I'm okay, so I can um, work it out really fast. Well, I cry, 
I think it over for some time and the next morning when I wake up, I, I, I feel like everything can be done. It's not a problem, you know. Yeah. Uh, and about my, uh, I'm very organized uh, mm -hmm. and I'm always on time. Not on time, I'm always back on track. <laughs> You're on time today. I'm, I'm always back on track. Yes, I, I, I'm never late. I'm never late. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm not that kind of uh, person who... I, I found that with uh, with Russians, I, I found that they're very organized and very um, uh, they're always on time. That's one that's yeah. very good quality, like for our Russians, it's, that they... It's rude. It's rude to be late. Uh, we, True to we be late, yeah. never never late uh, when yeah. we arranged to be. I, I yeah. think in terms of work people are not late but in meetings like so many times oh I'm running late five minutes ten minutes fifteen minutes twenty minutes but I know that people here are just uh, it's uh, it's hard for them to manage because they overcommit like Carl they're like oh I will yeah I will be there oh, I, I hate people like Carl yeah. and I don't have such friends I got rid all of all of uh, such people in my life, really, because it's very stressful to communicate to such people. Yeah, you might get rid of me soon as well. But... <laughs> <laughs> no, you're you're not like him. Okay. Yeah, I try not to be like him. Yeah, I do my best. <laughs> yeah. No, he, he's the worst version. You know, he <laughs> is the worst. <laughs> yeah, it's very frustrating to um. To work with such people when they say something do something else to get all right so now we're going to talk about uh, managers like you said oh the manager could be a big a driver of stress right so we have four people here mm -hmm. we're gonna be i don't know if you can see the, the the woman on the right but yeah i'll try to bring her in reception uh We've got four people. Uh, I'll I'll read Alex and Jack, and you can read Tanya and Kim. Um, okay. So, and we are going to discuss their uh, managers. I will ask you if the manager is toxic or he is it a good is does the manager stresses this person or not? Okay. So, mm -hmm. well, well, Alex, well, what can I say? I have been under a lot of pressure from work lately. However, the good thing is my manager is always there to support me. He himself handles pressure very well. I have a lot to learn from him. His manager is a really nice guy. <laughs> He's a really nice guy. Yeah, a lot to learn from him. And uh, even though when, when you have senior roles in organizations, especially private companies, it's very stressful. Most of these senior people that I know, they don't sleep at night probably get two or three mm -hmm. hours in of sleep. I don't know what they drink though. I want to know maybe Coke or something. I'm just saying. <laughs> uh, but they're very organized and I think uh, they handle the pressure very well. Mm -hmm. so I think he's got a good manager. His manager doesn't stress, his, uh, doesn't stress him out. Mm -hmm. uh, let's read Tanya. Tanya, I joined the company a few years ago. I had a tough time with the, previous, with the previous manager. She would make our lives or a living hell, quite frankly, but I can say better things about my new manager. He's very friendly and supportive. Well, we're talking about her previous manager. We are talking about his uh, new manager. But your, her new manager? Yeah, we can talk about both. So which... Okay, both. Yeah. Okay, her previous manager was like... Uh, uh, like a tough man or a tough person and uh, she he or she ah she she is she she uh, made them to live like in hell like in a hell mm -hmm. I don't understand the phrase quite frankly um, quite frankly means um, if I'm being honest Mm -hmm. Ah, oh, frankly speaking. Frankly speaking. Uh -huh, yes, yeah. I see. Quite frankly, quite frankly, need to need to learn it. Quite frankly, yes. Uh, so sh and your new manager seems to be friendly and supportive. 
-hmm. So she Lola. seems to be uh, happy now. She, she needs the, to be happy. Uh, yeah, seems to be happy, as you can see in the picture. <laughs> yeah. Um, Jack, recently the company is going through a tough time. The revenue is down and we cannot cut costs any further. On top of all this pressure, my manager expects me to stay late at work and work long hours and weekends too. I'm thinking about resigning. Uh, he's a uh, he's Japanese worker. He he can't <laughs> <laughs> resign. <laughs> Unfortunately. Or no, uh, Korean, yeah. <laughs> you know, in Korea, in Korea, they were um, I I read the news that they were um recommend not recommending, suggesting, recommending maybe um uh, that they there should be a sixty nine hour week. Uh, we might have heard about this. They they, they should uh, die at work. <laughs> this is this will be the best ending of their lives. <laughs> and uh, his manager should do everything for him to to die um, <laughs> earlier. <laughs> earlier. <laughs> so, <laughs> sorry for Japanese workers, but that's true, really. So. Yeah, how do you know about that? Uh, do you have any Japanese friends? I read some literature. No, I don't have any Japanese friends. Right, 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 right. Yeah, I, I'm aware. I'm I aware. have some Korean friends and Japanese friends, and they they said it's quite um it's quite real. It's um that's how hard they work. Uh, even in Singapore and all these Asian places, even in China, people are really hard working. Yes. Um, not in Australia, they're very lazy, but. Yeah, <laughs> forty hours is a lot of work for all these Chinese. Uh, you know, Chinese people are not hard workers at all. They are made to work, but Japanese people are hard workers uh, somewhere in their so. hearts. The aim of their life is to work hard and to die uh, during their work and to sleep uh, uh, on train uh, on the on on their way to work. You know, mm -hmm. to to sleep. Uh, to sleep uh, somewhere during their lunch time. Oh wow! That's... Something like culture, Japanese culture. Yes. Okay. And uh, if you, if you if you go to Japan, you will see that they really sleep uh, on buses on trains because uh, it. Um, how to say? It's normal to do it, and they will uh, show. Uh, by this how tired they are how how they work hard you know how so his people? boss is uh, his manager is pretty um, good for japan but but he's not good for russia he's, he's not he's not good i mean he's not good for anyone and not for japan i mean i, I don't <laughs> think because he's not satisfied right so uh, the question was does yes. he uh, does his manager stress him out? Yes, he, he does. He makes. He does. He's thinking about resigning, right? So although mm -hmm. he might be Japanese, he he he's thinking about resigning because uh, yes. he doesn't want to die young. He's still young, quite young. <laughs> <laughs> yes, maybe. <laughs> doesn't want to yes, die. But, but his manager is quite tough. Um. You know, tough, I wouldn't use because uh, it won't be appropriate. Tough would mean that um, it could mean positive. So you, mm -hmm. could, say, uh, you could say toxic. Toxic. Uh, yeah. You could say uh, inconsiderate. 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 You could say uh, his manager care less about him or his manager is mean. Mean. Some of the mm -hmm. negative words I would use for for such ma de 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 describing such managers. Uh, okay, uh, Kim, uh, yeah. please. Speak. <clears throat> I have been working for this company for twenty years, and I could not progress in my career because of my manager. She always makes sure that I was given meaningless tasks. Uh huh. That will keep me in my current position. Uh, her manager doesn't want her to uh, move up her career, mm -hmm. maybe. Progress, yeah. Uh, to have any progress. And she, uh, how to say, she feels maybe 
she is trying to feel herself higher or better than him uh, of to saying her some negative sentences or to how to say it in english criticize down maybe criticize to criticize criticize yes criticize and yes. Um, i don't know the equivalent uh, patronize i don't know Pat patronize to push her to the floor you mean is something like um this. to uh, to block her progression yes to block her pro progression yeah maybe yeah yeah i mean uh, you know some managers they do that on purpose so that uh, um because some roles are created by organizations that uh, that require um some roles are required for example admin i mean or for example receptionist yeah there is no progression in in those roles um admin roles i know a lot of admin roles even this um executive assistant roles you know these um secretary personal secretary role of course that secretary is not going to become the boss because it's just her role is to be a secretary for the rest of her, her life and normally the these roles are these roles are filled by uh, old women or maybe they were young they just uh, they've been in this role and now they're old um and yeah i mean uh, these people can feel like that they, these people can feel that yeah, my manager just wants me to stay in this role for the rest of my life because yeah. um uh because but but it's, it's it's reality that some rules are supposed to be what they are and and these people just have one choice to just switch jobs they they don't have any corporate ladder to climb if they are needed at this place and um sometimes uh really clever people really good workers are made to keep the same position all their lives because they do this very well and no one will do it better yes like that. that's true yeah okay let's move on let's see uh the traits of a good manager so these are some of the traits i'll just re read them out quickly good good communication skills that so if a person have these kind of qualities or traits uh then that means it's a, it's a good manager vision of what needs to be done and how to do it willing to get input from a staff able to step in and make a decision when needed willing to delegate tasks encourage staff to discuss problems flexible enough to change plans when needed support creative thinking among subordinates uh, no subordinates strengths and weaknesses and reward excellence so um any word that you think that you might not know here oh, wait. subordinate yeah all good uh but yeah i mean they, these are the traits but um most of the times uh we struggle uh you know managers liking that so if if someone wants to become a good manager i think it's a great way uh it's a good list to have these qualities or traits uh letting off steam do you know what uh what letting off steam mean mm -mm. Okay, this no, is... maybe something like venture. Yeah. How to say it. Hmm, like... So when we are very stressed, mm -hmm. we we would like to let off some steam, right? And we have steam build up in in our head. Lower stress. Yeah, we we want to lower our stress or stress levels. Um, that that's what it means, letting off steam. Uh, so one of the best antidotes for stress is physical activity. Uh, what's the meaning of antidote? Antidote, mm, cure. Cure, yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, is is physical activity? Um, uh, I know that you have uh, uh, an activity that you do every I don't know how how often, but that's three times uh, a week. Three three times, three times a, week. a week, yeah, that's great. Your training, that's amazing to let off the st uh, stress. I. I have gym membership, but I've been struggling to every week. I say myself, I tell myself, I will go this week. I'll go this week, but I think I might have to just yeah settle down. 
in my new you foundation. Make hmm? You should make yourself because it's really go do the it. Best yeah. Really yeah. the best episode. Yeah, true, and it's 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 a great way of you know helping the body to uh let off some steam. Um, what do you do to reduce the effects of stress? Exercising, socializing, play, or you could say uh, any any other I am um, ideas you have for letting off some steam. Uh, meditation. <laughs> meditation is a good one. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, sit down, meditate. Uh, some people pray. Com com complaining to your best friends. Complaining to your best friend. <laughs> that's the best, isn't it? The best? <laughs> Call your best friend and just tell him. Uh, just let it out. It's it's called let it out let it out yeah mm -hmm. let let every toxicity out i think um uh, talking to your your friends really helps because you don't want to hold those thoughts inside of you and your your good friends are there to 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 listen and share uh experiences in your tough times it helps it helps me a lot i i call my friends and let uh, everything what I I I know. Uh, uh, we use psychologist, right? It's really popular nowadays to have a psychologist, psych psychologist, correct? Psychol psychology, yeah, yeah, psychologist, psychologist to tell to talk to um, half maybe of women. <laughs> of mm -hmm. Ah, and yeah, nice, yeah. And uh, me too. I had a uh, um, psychology session. Oh, yeah, for yeah. Two, for two years. For two years. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm so calm nowadays. Wow. That's that's great. I think I, need, I might need it soon. Maybe. <laughs> it helps, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they're professional. They kind of listen to you. And I, I think the psychologists, the best thing what they do is they listen a lot. They don't talk. They don't speak much. They listen very peacefully to your story. They would ask you, okay, how do you feel? Tell me about your experience. And you can just let it out. They listen so calmly that even your best friend wouldn't listen because he would just interrupt. Try to tell you something. Right. So your best friend will not, mm, how, how, how to say, help you with this. He, will, he, he can just listen and to say, yeah, they all are big heads, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the psychologist will help you to solve it. You you will work uh, on your traumas. Mm. Do some exercises, some psychology exercises. You will do a lot of um, meditations, mm. tasks. So uh, for this situation, not to not take part in in future again. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Better is the is better than friends mm. to prevent the situations in future. Yeah, maybe recommend me one psychologist from. I'm the Russian one. <laughs> yeah, if they can speak English, that will be great. <laughs> well, I'm learning Russian, so I I will hopefully catch it. <laughs> okay, um, okay, so that that was it for the lesson. I was maybe okay. I will give one hour next time for for such lessons because this is these are advanced lessons takes longer. Normally the base big beginner and intermediate might take half an hour, but these are this is the homework. Yes. Uh, I'll put it on YouTube so you can go and your task will be that go on YouTube and then access your homework, uh, and then and you can listen to your, your recording as well and see what needs improve. I'm looking for feedback so that that will really help me. If if you can provide that heat feedback, but I I will need to edit this video and then I can share the link with you. Yeah, sure. Uh, so we we need to complete in this task. You need to complete the sentences. Uh, uh and you've got the the words on the top. Uh, and then this one is uh put the words in the correct order. Oh, uh, okay, okay, okay. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. Yes done <laughs> nice good way of uh, using technology <laughs> take pictures right, right. so write these sentences using may might could for plans for the weekend 
right? Oh, so this is again okay. less and less certain events. Um, okay. Then this one. Uh, complete conversation. Complete the conversation. Uh, and then. And then we wait, need... wait, complete the conversation again. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> yes, done. I should leave it for a while so that it stays on YouTube as well. Not everyone is struggling to uh, pause. Um, here we are talking. We we need to write three activities you you do to help handle stress. So if there is an example. I socialize with my friends on the weekend. This is actually my personal example. That's what I do. Mm -hmm. That help that helps me a lot. Like you said, talking to your friend about what's mm -hmm. happening in your life. And mm -hmm. they give you, sometimes they give you good advice. Sometimes they give you really stupid advice, but that doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> as long as you can tell your stuff to them, that's, that's all good. Uh, and that, that is it. That's the end of, uh, that's the end of the lesson. I'll just stop sharing. That's the cool. end of the lesson. How was the lesson, uh, Anya? Oh, really In interesting. Your... <laughs> I was really <laughs> tired. Yeah, really yeah. Tired. I think yeah i think we i don't know maybe we should have less content uh because i think i did uh, and more talking yeah yes 